How many of you have been to Arlington? No. Seen, been to a funeral and seen how they handle things. I'll put our team up against that team anytime. The only thing we don't have is we don't have the caissons and the horses and everything else. But these, these guys work hard to be sharp and they are sharp. They are one of the sharp, sharpest groups I've ever seen. They work hard at it. So get a chance to always say thank them because uh, also standing around in those suits on this kind of a warm day isn't pleasant. It's a lot nicer than it used to be because they're, they're polyester now where they used to be wool. So. But we're here today to honor a group of men and women who during the past week, not only at this cemetery, but at other national cemeteries across the country, have been laid to rest without receiving their final honors. <laughs> Today, we will, or we have, given them their final honors. The three volley uh, rounds, the playing of taps, the folding and presentation of a flag. Those are the honors that each and every man and woman who joined the military and served honorably has earned. But we, we salute them. We don't know why they're here, why they were brought here without a family to give them honors or just send them off. All we know is that they did, in fact, serve honorably in the U.S. military for a, a certain period of time. And for that service, we salute them. They have kept us free. They have kept the Constitution of the United States intact and regardless of their job not everybody can be G.I. Joe As a matter of fact most people were not G.I. Joe they were the Mr. and Mrs. of the United States military that kept the military running. And that's an important job. Because without keeping the military running, we would have no military at all. So we have four this week that have been brought out for burial. Jim? Good morning. Good morning. The names of the four veterans that were uh, interned this week were Donald Woodster Chill, Army, honorably served. Tanya Payne, Army, honorably, honorably served. George Carrillo, Marine Corps, honorably served. And John Rizzi, Army honorably served. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I have an, a word to say. Um, it might be a little bit lengthy. I'll try to get through it. Um, a young boy born in London, July 24, 17, 25. The son of a commander of a merchant ship and uh, his father sailed the Mediterranean. When he was 11, he, was, he went to sea with his father and made many voyages. His mother passed away at a young age. So. 
then when he became of age, he went into the military. He was required on a man of war ship. And as a young teenager, he wasn't able to tolerate the conditions or the uh, requirements. He deserted. But soon was recaptured and publicly flogged and demoted from midshipman to common seaman. Then he was exchanged into the service on a slave ship, which took him to the coast of Sierra Leone. And then he became the servant of a slave trader and was brutally abused. In 1748, a sea captain, doesn't give the name, but he knew his father. And he rescued him from the hands of the slave traders. He recorded later in years when he being born on the seas with his father. His father had retired. And uh, while he was at sea on his ship, he was attempting to steer the ship through a violent storm. And uh, later he referred to it as the Great Deliverance. He recorded in his journal that when all seemed lost and the ship would surely sink, he said, Lord, have mercy upon us. This young boy, through all the travails, rebellion, and such, such a long time ago, I, I could just imagine the wooden ships in the 1700s to endure uh, heavy seas with John Newton. And what he contribute before America became the colonies in the 1700s, he wrote a hymn that touches the heart. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Twas grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed. Through many dangers, toils, and snares, I have already come. Tis grace has brought me safe thus far, and grace will lead me home. The Lord has promised good to me. His word my hope secures. He will my shield and portion be as long as life endures. Yes, when this flesh and heart shall fail and mortal life shall cease, I shall possess within the veil a life of joy and peace. The earth shall soon dissolve like snow, the sun forbear to shine, but God who called me here below will forever be mine. Let us pray. Gracious Father, we thank you, Lord, this time, this beautiful morning, to give honor to the veterans without family buried this week. We all humble ourselves before you and ask for your grace to meet us in all our difficulties, our failures, our honors, our accomplishments, that you will lead our way and that we may rest in your arms eternally. Amen. Amen. You can listen to the words of amazing grace and it's amazing grace. Thank <laughs> you.
I mean, it, you listen to it and it touches every one of us. You listen to the words and you can see somewhere where it has fit into your life. Because we're, we're all been down and somebody, somehow, someone, someone in your belief has reached down and grabbed your hand and pulled you back up. If it weren't so, you wouldn't be here today. We've all had our problems. We all have been able to maybe not overcome those problems, but learn to live with them and to cope with them while those around us that love us support us while we are trying to get back into being the human being that we're supposed to be before our final days. It's going to be hot today, but we're right in the middle of a cooling trend, so they said. It's going to be warm again by the end of uh, the week. So be careful out there. Ride safely. Hydrate. Keep yourself very cool. Uh, wet yourself down. Get your Powerade, Gatorade, whatever uh, drink supplement you can. Coffee, tea, and booze doesn't do it. No. <clears throat> I'm still experimenting on that. <laughs> but please, be safe, ride safe, because we have four confirmed for next week and I don't want any of your names to be on that confirmed list. If we cannot do him honor while he's here to hear the praise, then at least let's give him homage at the ending of his days. Perhaps just a simple headline in a paper that would say, our country is in mourning, a soldier died today. Thank you all for being here. And if before you all leave, I just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart for what you do and you support the cemetery, you support the veterans that come out here without families. This is my, well next week is my last week here in Riverside. I have been blessed and honored to open up a new national cemetery in Omaha, Nebraska. So it's been a pleasure knowing all of you. Thank you. And it truly is amazing what work you do. I mean, even if you don't know it, the families that see you out here, the families of, you know, knowing that there's somebody here to support a veteran that didn't otherwise have the military honors and the presence and, and just that support. So what you guys do really means a lot to a lot of people. So keep that in mind when it's hot and you're thinking, oh my goodness, do I really want to go out there? But you guys do a fabulous job and I just want to say thank you so much for what you do. That's why we ask you at all times to maintain your uh, bearing in a very professional manner because people are watching who we are. They see us out here. They wonder who we are. They ask the, the uh, cemetery people, who are all those bikers out there? Well. Just because we dress like this, the citizens don't know the difference between a biker and a motorcycle enthusiast. So to them, we're bikers. To the people here, we are here to honor the veterans. And they explain that to the families and to the friends who come up and say, who are they and what are they? So that's why when you're sitting around or coming up to the uh, uh, committal here, always maintain your decorum because people are always watching and people are always 
going to comment hopefully in the positive. And Cindy, it's been fantastic knowing you and uh, good luck in your new position. Uh, it's a fantastic opportunity. Uh, you're opening from the ground up. Huh? Yes, sir. In Omaha. Yeah. It's actually in Papillion, but Omaha is the closest city I think anybody would recognize if you said it. I, <laughs> it doesn't make any difference. It's all flat and empty. Anyway. <laughs> and corn huskers, go big red. <laughs> They've, they've put out some fantastic players over the years, so thank you very much, and we will always thank of you, and you get a chance to come back and see us, please. Oh, go. I definitely will.